And fast forward to 95, uh, series against the West Indies over there. It was tied 1-1 at Kingston. Um, we were chasing the first Frank Royal Trophy in almost 18 years. Australia's really struggling to win over there. Uh, what can you remember about that test? Well, I remember it was a great uh, victory for Australia. And uh, going on that tour, you know, we had, um, you know, really good plans and, you know, good th thought process about beating the West Indies, which we never had done in the past. We always saw them as being a bit too good and, um, you know, too hard to beat um, with the team they had, you know, during the 80s and the early 90s. But I think we had the self-belief in that, that tournament and that tour. And obviously it culminated in that test match in Jamaica where I was lucky enough to make 100. Um, my brother Stephen made 200, so we put on a, a really good partnership, with, which probably helped win that game. But, um, you know, it's, it's one to remember because to beat the West Indies over there is, is not easy to do. And it's, it's sort of been the changing of the guard, I think, in, in world cricket a little bit from that time on. We sort of were the dominant side and the West Indies dropped away. So, in a way, it was a, a, a real watershed moment in Australian cricket. Can you recall what the feeling was around the squad at that time? Was there a lot of mounting pressure because Australia hadn't been successful over there in so long? I mean, there's always pressure when you play the West Indies, but you know, I think right from the word go, we trained really hard. Um, our attitude was great. Our self-belief was good too. I mean, if you don't believe you can beat a team, you're not going to beat them. But on that tour, we had a good group of players, a good mixture of young players and experienced players, and we really had that self-belief. I think that helped us, you know, get us through that series and uh, win that Test match as well. So, in typical West Indies fashion, they uh, obviously tried even you bouncing you out of the game. There, you ma you managed to to get under their skin, and you sent multiple balls down a third man by stepping away and undercutting a few balls. Do you feel like you may have innovated a few shots there that may have come in the future of short corn for cricket? <laughs> I don't know about that, but, um, well, uh, against the West Indies, you're going to get a lot of short balls, and I wasn't a particularly good hooker of the ball. I mean, I could hook, hook when I had to, but... I thought it was easy to actually step away and you know, hit the ball over third man or over, over the slips, which I did on a few occasions. Um, but there is an element of risk there because you, you've got to half premeditate the ball's going to be short. So there is some risk there, but I thought it was worth the risk. And, you know, I think the West Indies bowlers weren't too happy with it. Um, it was another way of scoring because, I mean, the idea of batting is to score runs. And if, you know, they're bowling short all the time, you've got to have some avenues where you're going to score. And that was an avenue I thought I could play it pretty well. Um, whether it's... Well, there was an innovative shot that's coming to the game now, um, and I sort of was the first one to do it. I'm not really sure about that. I did try a reverse sweep um, a couple of years earlier and hit it straight back onto my stump. So, um, but I mean, the guys these days have got so many shots um, in their repertoire. But back then it was a little bit different. Um, but I thought it was worth the risk in, in playing the shot over third man.